Bonjour tout le monde. Merci d'être ici. Je suis accompagné aujourd'hui de la vice-première ministre Freeland et des ministres Joly et Anand. On est ici aujourd'hui pour parler de la situation en Ukraine. L'attaque injustifiable de la Russie contre l'Ukraine est inacceptable. This morning, Ukrainians woke up to the brutal, terrifying reality of war. President Putin has launched a horrific, unprovoked attack on their country, a sovereign nation, including missile strikes in their capital, Kiev. He has needlessly put the lives of innocent people at risk, violated Russia's international treaties, and launched the greatest threat to European stability since World War II. Canada is unequivocal in our condemnation of Russia's unprovoked and unjustified attack on the sovereign, democratic state of Ukraine. President Putin's brazen disregard for international law, democracy, and human life are a massive threat to security and peace around the world. I just spoke a few minutes ago with President Zelensky. I told him that we are announcing strong action today and continue to stand with him and with the Ukrainian people. Earlier this morning, I met with G7 partners to coordinate our response. We're also working closely with NATO and our allies. Together, we have made clear that Russian violence, aggression, and violation of international law will not go unpunished. We stand united and steadfast in our support of Ukraine's sovereignty, and we stand in solidarity with the Ukrainian people's right to decide their own future in a free and democratic state. Mardi, après la reconnaissance par le président Poutine des soi-disant États indépendants de Donetsk et Luhansk, le Canada a annoncé une première série de sanctions concertées. Les sanctions du Canada ciblent les responsables des actions illégales de la Russie, ainsi que deux banques russes soutenues par l'État. De plus, on interdit aux Canadiens de faire des achats de la dette souveraine russe. Et il sera interdit de participer à toute transaction financière avec les soi-disant États indépendants de Donetsk et de Luhansk. On a également annoncé le déploiement de jusqu'à 460 membres supplémentaires des Forces armées canadiennes pour soutenir l'OTAN sous l'opération Réussurance afin de favoriser la paix et la sécurité en Europe. Today, in light of Russia's reckless and dangerous military strike, we are imposing further severe sanctions. These sanctions will target 58 individuals and entities, including members of the Russian elite and their family members, as well as the Wagner Group and major Russian banks, among others. We will also sanction members of the Russian Security Council, including the Defense Minister, the Finance Minister, and the Justice Minister. In addition, Effectively, immediately, effective immediately, we are ceasing all export permits for Russia and cancelling existing permits. These sanctions are wide-reaching. They will impose severe costs on complicit Russian elites, and they will limit President Putin's ability to continue funding this unjustified invasion. Aujourd'hui, suite à la frappe militaire irresponsable et dangereuse de la Russie, on impose d'autres sanctions sévères. Ces sanctions ont une grande portée. Elles vont entraîner de grands coups aux élites russes ayant des liens de complicité et elles vont limiter la capacité du président Poutine à continuer de financer cette invasion injustifiée. Je veux être clair. L'attaque de la Russie contre l'Ukraine est aussi une attaque contre la démocratie, la loi internationale et la liberté. Make no mistake, Russia's attack on Ukraine is also an attack on democracy, on international law, on human rights, and on freedom. Russia's actions stand in direct opposition to the democratic principles that generations of Canadians have fought to protect. Democracies and 
democratic leaders everywhere must come together to defend these principles and stand firmly against authoritarianism. Russia must immediately cease all hostile actions against Ukraine and withdraw all military and proxy forces from the country. Ukraine's sovereignty and territorial integrity must be respected and the Ukrainian people, like all people, must be free to determine their own future. I want to be clear. Our quarrel is not with the people of Russia. It is with President Putin and Russian leadership that has enabled and supported this further invasion of Ukraine. La vérité, c'est que la Russie viole la souveraineté de l'Ukraine depuis des années. En 2014, elle a annexé illégalement la Crimée. Depuis, elle n'a jamais cessé de nuire à la démocratie en Ukraine. Et aujourd'hui, le président Poutine a ouvert un nouveau chapitre sombre de cette histoire en lançant une invasion à grande échelle. These are deeply disturbing times for the international community and for people everywhere who care about freedom and democracy. And while the eyes of the world are on leaders, we can never lose sight of the human cost of conflict. Innocent people, including children, are now facing violence and chaos. In these dark hours, Canada's message to the people of Ukraine is this. You are not alone. We are standing with you. To Canadians and permanent residents in Ukraine, your safety and security are now our top priority. We also want to make sure that you can get to safety. We've arranged for safe passage for you and your families at the land borders with Poland, Slovakia, Hungary, Romania, and Moldova. We are urgently issuing travel documents for affected Canadians, permanent residents, and their immediate family members. We're also prioritizing immigration applications for Ukrainians who want to come to Canada. And to ensure we can serve people as quickly as possible, today we are launching a new dedicated phone line for anyone at home or abroad with urgent Ukraine-related immigration questions. Aux Canadiens et aux résidents permanents du Canada qui se trouvent en Ukraine, votre santé et votre sécurité sont notre priorité absolue. On a pris des mesures pour que vous et votre famille puissiez traverser en toute sécurité les frontières avec la Pologne, la Slovaquie, la Hongrie, la Roumanie et la Moldavie. On délivre de toute urgence des documents de voyage aux Canadiens et aux résidents permanents touchés, ainsi qu'aux membres de leur famille immédiate. On traite aussi en priorité les demandes d'immigration provenant d'Ukrainiens qui souhaitent venir au Canada. Et pour être certain de pouvoir servir les gens le plus rapidement possible, on lance aujourd'hui une nouvelle ligne téléphonique spécialement conçue pour les gens qui sont ici ou à l'étranger qui ont d'urgentes questions à poser sur l'immigration en lien avec l'Ukraine. Last night, I spoke with Ukrainian Canadians at the Ukrainian Canadian Congress board meeting. I told them that President Putin has underestimated the strength and unity of democratic allies and partners, and he has underestimated the strength and resolve of Ukrainian people. These are traits of Ukrainian Canadians, too. You have helped build this country. You are proud of your, country, your culture and your heritage, and you don't back down. Well, neither will Canada. Our support for Ukraine, for democracy, and for human rights remains unwavering. 